I are we going to do a coin, a coin toss to be fair too, Scott? Remember we talked about that? Okay, All so right. Mark, you got a coin. Greg, you call it. So, so okay. one has the queen on it and the other has a moose on it. Okay, so let's make, let's make Trump the moose. Queen or moose? <laughs> Trump's the moose. Okay. okay. Whoa. And it is Her Majesty. So Biden's first. There you first. go. Biden's first. Oh, let me say this. Let me say this. Keep in mind as we do this, we're not for anybody. We're not on any one side on this. We go right down the middle. That's because we call them like we see them. We're not going to be for Trump and we're not going to be for Biden. If Trump does something, he looks deceptive or he looks like he's worried. He looks like he may not be telling the truth. We're going to tell you that. And we're going to tell you why we'll say one. Here's why one, two, three, same thing for Biden. If he looks like he's not being honest with us, if he looks like he's stressed, whatever it is, we're going to say, we see that because of one, two, and three. So keep that in mind as we go through this. We're not on any one side here. We're right down the middle. All right, you guys ready? Yeah. Here we go. I'm Scott Rouse. I'm a body language expert and analyst. I train law enforcement in the military in interrogation and body language. I also created with Greg Hartley, bodylanguagetactics.com. Mark? I'm Mark Bowden. I'm an expert in human behavior and body language. I help people all over the world to stand out, win trust, and gain credibility every time they speak, including some of the leaders of the G7. Excellent. Chase? I'm Chase Hughes, a best-selling author, a human behavior expert, also trained extreme persuasion and influence tactics to the U.S. military and the general public. Greg? Greg Hartley. I'm a former Army interrogator, interrogation instructor, resistance to interrogation instructor. I worked on this course with Scott called BodyLanguageTactics.com, and I spend most of my time on Wall Street and with corporate America today. Awesome. Well, today what we're going to do is we're going to look at the differences in stress between Biden and Trump during the debates. So what we've done is taken footage from old debates and we're going to compare them. We've got um, a situation where, where, in other words, Biden's being attacked and we look at his stress. And we've got one where Trump's being attacked and we look at his stress and we compare those. So we'll, we'll do one of, since we just, we just did a coin toss and Biden won. So he's um, going to be first. I don't know so if that's talk, winning, but yeah. Yeah, that's true too. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll look at his, we'll look at a short clip of, of Joe Biden and we'll talk about what we see in him. Then we'll go to the same type of clip for President Trump and we'll tell, talk about what we see, we see with him. Yeah. So the reason we're doing this is so when you're watching a debate between two people, you can pick up on that person's stressors and know when they're on message versus when they're feeling stress and reacting. All right, so here we go. Let's take a look at Joe Biden. I also believe, and it's personal, and I was actually very, it was hurtful to hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. And it was not only that, but you also worked with them to oppose busing. And, you know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. So I will tell you that on this subject, it cannot be an intellectual debate among Democrats. We have to take it seriously. We have to act swiftly. As Attorney General of California, I was very proud. To All right, Chase, what do you got? We see Right when she starts, he knows the road she's going down. So we see this down, head downcast movement. And the head downcast isn't very deceptive. It's not, a, it's not a particularly large deception indicator or a big one. But we see him either A, to collect his thoughts, or B, to do some kind of eye blocking, which we already know from the other videos that Joe Biden is famous for eye blocking. When she later says the word busing, Starts to mention the topic of busing. We see a little bit more eye-blocking behavior there. And there is constant tension in this chin boss muscle here throughout, which typically, if you talk to pretty much any expert who's actually an expert, they'll tell you this is kind of a grief or a shame muscle. There's actually a really cool experiment they did in New York City after 9-11. New Yorkers don't talk to each other very much, but they would exchange glances to each other and just kind of raise that muscle. And they called that recently, just named that the shared grief expression, which I thought was really cool. And his blink rate goes from an 18 to a 74 in this time frame when she's talking about this. So I thought that was interesting. And I think there was some genuine concern, maybe some disbelief and some shock there as he turned his head. And I'll let you guys 
dissect the rest of that. Okay. Greg, uh, Greg you want to go? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a really good one because you see real pain in his face. I mean, this is not pretend. This is a great opportunity. All of the muscles in your face, and I'm going to try to remember the muscles. It's been about a thousand years since I studied musculature, so I'll have to try to remember the ones. But for sure, you see his brow rise and come to a kind of a, a, a rise there in, in Duchesne's grief muscle. You also see, Chase has pointed out so well, that chin boss rise. But if, if I recall correctly, these are incisivus, these two muscles that are right beside your nose and that run down the long side of the face, and they hollow your face when you're feeling pain or grief so that you get that look. His eye contact is down. To your point, his chin is covering his throat, except for occasionally he'll look up, and you can't miss that blink rate. It's one of the best we've ever had, I think, in terms of escalation. All those muscles show that he's really feeling grief. He does the eye blocking piece, and then he moves down to the right into an emotional conversation and then back down to the left in internal conversation. I later read he felt like he was flat-footed when this happened. He was not ready for it. And you can see it in his face. It's very good and very easy to see the pain and grief. So, Scott, what do you got? Um, I think he's being pretty stoic at this point. He's standing there and he's taking it, you know, because he sees it coming, I think, when she's talking about it. What he sees slowly throughout the, the whole piece, we see his eyebrows come together really slowly in there. We see that. Uh, what Greg was talking about earlier, we see that come together really slowly. So it's 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 growing. The feel that 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 feeling is growing for him. And when she says the word "bussing," he blinks five times in two seconds, which is a, wow. which is a load. I never paid attention to blink rate a whole lot until Chase brought it up every four minutes. <laughs> I was like, "Geez, there's something there." <laughs> and then uh, and when she when he when she says uh, on that bus, you know, she was on the bus. His blinks his blink stares down to to almost nothing. Goes down to nothing. Then when she starts, when she says that, and he turns to her. He starts staring. His eyes get wider and wider and wider. As not, they're not out of hand or anything. But they start getting wider. He's trying to take in all the information he can. But at the same time, I think he's thinking about what he's got to say next because that that's pretty hard to to get past. But I think he does a good job doing that. Mark, what do you got? Yeah. So what's interesting for me is this is exactly what I train people for, or certainly politicians for these exact moments. And so what I'm seeing is some of his reactions are trained reactions and countermeasures because he knows what's coming. And then his countermeasure stops working for him because, because he gets hit with some specifics that his uh, unconscious mind can't, his conscious mind can't countermeasure. He wasn't expecting. So I would say he's expecting something to come up around this area. And so you see him play his countermeasure, which is to break eye contact and move his head completely away and stay very, very still. So he breaks and there's some eye blocking there and there's some stillness. But this for me is just an avoidance tactic and it actually works quite well. And I think that's why Scott says, you know, it's pretty stoic what's going on there. And I think that's at this point what he's trying to present. World leader, stoic, good point, but look how this, how I handle this like a rock. Then she hits him with bussing. <laughs> that's really super specific. And so we get the downcast eyes and the eye block and, the, and those lids stay there for a long, long time. And then we get it again on little girl. That's really specific. And so she pulls his eye contact back again shouldn't be doing that. That wasn't technique at all. She's really smart. She's pulled him back. And now she's got eye contact with him. He's under real stress. So what I want people to notice is there's how he, he deals with technique with the stress. And then there's what he's like when he's really under the stress. And on busing and little girl, that's him really under stress. That's what I got for you. I also believe, and it's personal, and I was actually very, it was hurtful to hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. And it was not only that, but you also worked with them to oppose busing. And, you know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. So I will tell you that on this subject, 
It cannot be an intellectual debate among Democrats. We have to take it seriously. We have to act swiftly. As Attorney General of California, I was very proud. All right, now let's uh, move on to the same type of situation with President Trump. Secretary Clinton, do you want to respond? Well, like everyone else, I've spent a lot of time thinking over the last 48 hours um, about what we heard and saw. You know, with prior Republican nominees for president, I, I disagreed with them on politics, policies, principles, but I never questioned their fitness to serve. Donald Trump is different. I said starting back in June that he was not fit to be president and commander in chief. And many Republicans and independents have said the same thing. What we all saw and heard on Friday was Donald talking about women, what he thinks about women, what he does to women. And he has said that the video doesn't represent who he is, but I think it's clear to anyone who heard it that it represents exactly who he is. All right, uh, Greg, you wanna go first? Sure, he starts off by swallowing heavily. He's a heavy guy, so he's got a lot of stuff going on there. But he starts off by swallowing heavily and then clenching his teeth. You can see that working in the side of his face and you can tell he's actually very not very happy. He does something I call a chained elephant and that is all of his energy is going somewhere and he's, he is not going to use his hands because he doesn't want to leak information at the wrong time. So his hands are down and he's doing that kind of that rocking thing or dancing bear, whatever you want to call it. His eyes are focused on a threat but he's remembering to connect. If you watch him, he's looking at her like, I can't believe this. And then he'll turn and remember he's supposed to look at the moderator and make eye contact and keep up with the audience. He mouth grooms at one point, does this, opens his mouth, almost says something, and then realizes bad idea and stops. So he's, he almost let that objection out. And he does that weird thing that he does with pursing his lips to control that, like it was an accident and he just fixed it. Um, he purses his lips several times in self-control. And then when she starts to attack, that chained elephant thing increases dramatically. It, his, he squints at her with a lot of scrutiny, and then he does some down right eye movement, goes back to the pursed lips, but he controls all this, squints his eyes, and looks at her. You know, it, one of the things that I want to point out with him and with anybody like him who came to politics from somewhere else, politicians have to make everybody some kind of happy. CEOs don't. So they come in with a whole different set of body language than people who have had to be in the public eye and make people happy along the way. Not that he's not an entertainer. I'm not taking that away from him. But when you're the 800 pound gorilla, you get to make your own kind of rules. Once you become president, you work for a whole lot more people. So you see some of that here. Um, Chase, what do you got? I get to say it this time. Hey. We see something here that Barbara and Alan Pease, as far as I know, coined this term. It's called the fig leaf. And the fig leaf behavior is when a male wraps his hands or clasps his hands in front of his genitals. And for women, we see a behavior that men don't do very often, which is a single arm wrap, which is where one arm wraps around the body and covers the uterus. I know you can't see it here on camera, but both of those behaviors are typically done during one of three circumstances. And this is when someone is feeling vulnerable, threatened, or insecure. And this is a classic display of this. That is a, this is a cherry picked example. I could not have scoured the internet for a better example for you guys to see this. So that is great fig leaf behavior, which is called a genital protective behavior in the grand scheme of things. We have some sour puckering, which I'm going to leave all to Mark. I'm not even going to talk about it. But this body swaying behavior here that we're seeing is a repetitive motion. And if we go back to the grandfather, all of our uh, body language dad for all of us, his name's Joe Navarro. He has a book called What Everybody is Saying. It's right here. In this book, he talks about this, and in his keynotes, he talks about this. It is profound, and it could fit on a post-it note. Any repetitive behavior is self-soothing. Any repetitive behavior is self-soothing, and I think that's great. However, if you want to use this in your life, 
So this self-soothing comes from a spike in anxiety and the body says, I need to burn this crap off. I need to get rid of this stuff. So it starts to do repetitive behaviors to burn off the energy. If you're ever need, needing to control this without other people knowing, curling your toes into your shoes, tightening your leg muscles, if there's a table between you and the other person is a great way to burn off that excess adrenaline. And I will pass it to Mark. What do you got? Lovely. So let me all, first of all, uh, address the, the sour taste or the bitter taste in the mouth or what we often call the sucking of a lemon. And, mm, you know, so now that's a little bit different from the lip pursing, which we see later on. But check back in that video for moments where you see like little indentations back here. And that's the bitterness. So as, as kids, we, we start to we start this reflex because um, alkaloids that are in uh, bitter tasting stuff, they're, they're medicinal, but for most kids, you don't want lots of it. So we develop this bitter taste to kind of push out those alkaloid containing leaves that we might have eaten. What we know is, is that's the unconscious mind going, oh, this is really bad medicine. This is poison. There's something poisonous going on here. Look, here's what I see around here that I, I love. So first of all, yeah, we absolutely do see that, that fig leaf, but also we see that the body tuck in because of that and you get minimization. For somebody as big as Trump, and he's a big, big lad, he's a big man, okay? If he starts to minimize, especially he's wearing suits that are designed to create an even bigger shoulder mass than, than he even has, and he's big in the shoulders anyway, so we know he's under pressure here because he's literally compressing himself in. What I love to see from him is that, um, that cheek blow that he does. Yeah, you see it a little bit there. And um, I would say that's him saying, I'm not quite sure what to do here. I don't know. I'm going to have to contain my air around this. I don't think he was expecting this one. He's not expecting this particular attack, which I would say from my point of view means he's not prepared this fully. In fact, I think if he'd been better coached, better prepared, he would never be allowed to do a fig leaf. He would never be allowed to minimize. We'd have a countermeasure for this already. And so we get this lip pursing there as well, which is disagreement. The bigger, the more extruded the lips, the bigger the disagreement. He does that at least twice and it, and it builds. So for me, the interesting thing is what's triggered this? What's triggered something he doesn't know how to countermeasure? And I would say it's a direct character attack on him being unfit to lead. Now, now that I know that, now that I speculate, if I can attack him, his character directly around unfitness to lead, he will be destabilized. So should I be training the, the, his counter? That's exactly what we'd be going for, to see if we can get those kind of behaviors. We'd be working out ways in order to directly attack his character and say that character fault means he's unfit to lead. Great to see that because, you know, what I'd normally expect from him if he's expecting attacks is that he'll do uh, a number of weird faces, like a succession of, of three things. I can't do it very well, but Greg, I've seen you do some brilliant kind of in, <laughs> yeah, exactly like a, like he'll do, he'll do a bizarre, yeah, array of, of a succession of, of uh, extreme f facial coding, um, which, is, which is impossible to read. Uh, he, use, he uses, and I'll, I'll leave it at this, but he uses yeah. all that stuff as, as a regulator, or as you would refer to it, Mark, a moderator. He controls conversation with it because he looks at you like right. and people back down. That's exactly it. That's exactly it, Greg. And he doesn't do that in this situation, <laughs> which makes me think he's totally off guard here and he's destabilized because for me that would be his usual go-to and he's he's he doesn't manage to execute it right. yep. that's that's my my piece on that uh scott All take right. it away yeah. for um let's talk about that that cheek blow thing for a second because i think what we're seeing there is the same thing we saw with um robert durst in the jinx remember in the jinx where they confront him about the murders and he starts talking about that and you see him start burping 
because he gets that his, his, and that's very common when someone is in that situation, they see it coming or something, they get information they don't know that person has and they'll, they'll, they'll burp some. And Robert Durst in the jinx on the Netflix special, it's, it's, it, it looks almost fake. He's doing it so much. He's doing it loud right in front of the guy. He's not trying to hide it. But I think what we're seeing there, since he got that information, when she said, um, Donald Trump is different. That's when you see that, that little mouth thing he does. And then he, and then that little, I think he's burping because if you see him almost push like that, y'all, you, you see him scooch just a little bit. Watch when we replay this. I think it's a burp. Cause I think that's, that's the digestive system. Mm. You're going, Oh man, here we go. Because I, then again, fight or flight's kicking in and everything's moving away from the things you don't need and to start swinging or running or whatever you're going to do. At that point, he's thinking I'm loading my, I, he's thinking about what he's going to say next. So that's where he's getting into there. That big, that big thing where he does his mouth that like that Lance Armstrong does a thing and that I coined called monkey mouth. I haven't seen it a whole lot. This is similar to that for me to what it looks like to me because when Lance Armstrong on the Oprah interview where she's talking to him and she's, she's asking about these questions and he's got to come out and say, I lied and I wasn't telling the truth, yada, yada, all those things. He'll do this. And he does it like three times the interview. He just goes like that. And he looks like a monkey when he does it. So I called it monkey mouth. And I remember seeing that over the years, people doing that. And I always thought it was odd, but I put that together. That's part of that where your brain, you're, you're not even engaged with what you're doing at that point. You're so far into to uh, inner dialogue and trying to think of what you're going to say next, your body just starts doing weird things. You start firing off these really odd things. The, the purse notes denote the purse lips denotes indicates suggests um, he doesn't agree, but of course he's not going to agree with anything. She says, unlike Biden, he doesn't even look her in the eye. Biden will then turn around and that's just boom. He just lock with you. He doesn't do that. He doesn't look at her. He, he looks at her, but he doesn't lock eyes with her ever. Not once, especially in this. Um, Another one is when he starts that stepping back and forth, Greg, that's Greg's thing. I mean, I, le I learned that in, in your, in the, the book about lies you did, Greg, when he, where he, he's what he does the elephant thing. Same thing we're going to see in a little while where he does what well, talk about that. The tigers in the cage, Greg. Yeah. Now this is another, as you would say, self-soothing or, or as, as I think Desmond Morris is the first guy who called it self-soothing, but adapters, a way to make yourself comfortable in a space you're uncomfortable in. If you put a tiger in a cage, it's going to pace and pace and pace and pace and pace. And humans do the same thing. If we're feeling something, it's going to leak somewhere. That adapter is his way of relaxing, moving around, releasing nervous energy. And he happens to have his hands in front of his crotch. To your point, Chase, great, great call. I call that sacred space. When you make a space for yourself and make yourself comfortable in that space, you own everything. That's a way to soothe a hell of a lot of stress. Right. And then toward the end here, we see he's moved from looking like this to he's almost like this as he's, as his fight or flight's kicking in and he's, his head is down. It's not major, but if you look at the two, if you, as you go through, you'll slowly see that, that, that happening to him. He's squinching up and those arms are getting tight and he's, and he's, he's, He's not flexing, but he's getting all tied up in there. You'll actually see him get smaller uh, as his arms get tighter on his chest. He's famous for doing, as we all know, his uh, arms being squished to his chest. And he'll, he'll come out of there and start, start gesturing to his illustrators with his arms tied to his chest, which is a little bit odd because you, you don't see that all the time. So that's a little bit different. It's a classic Trump move. Uh, and you guys have covered everything else. So that's good for me. Secretary Clinton, do you want to respond? Well... Like everyone else, I've spent a lot of time thinking over the last 48 hours um, about what we heard and saw. You know, with prior Republican nominees for president, I, I disagreed with them on politics, policies, principles, but I never questioned their fitness to serve. Donald Trump is different. I said starting back in June, that he was not fit to be president and commander in chief. And many Republicans and independents have said the same thing. What we all saw and heard on Friday was Donald talking about women, what he thinks about women, what he does to women. And he has said that the video doesn't represent who he is, but I think it's clear to anyone who heard it that it represents exactly who he is. You ready to move on? Great. Cool. Here we go. Nice. Senator Warren. Mr. Vice President and Senator Warren. Hey, I'm the only one on this stage that actually got anything done on health care. Okay? 
I'm the guy the president turned to and said, go get the votes for Obamacare. And I noticed what everybody's talking about is the plan that I first introduced. That is to go and add to Obamacare, provide a public option, a Medicare-like option. It cost a lot and increased the subsidies. It cost a lot of money. It cost $750 billion over 10 years. But I pay for it by making sure that Mike and other people pay at the same tax rate their secretary pays at. That's how we get it paid, number one. Number two, you know, the, from the moment from the moment we passed that signature legislation, Mike called it a disgrace, number one. Number two, Trump decided to get rid of it. And number three, my friends here came up with another plan. But they don't tell you. When you ask Bernie how much it cost, the last time yeah. he said that, I think it was on your show, he said, we'll find out. We'll find out how, or something to that effect. It cost over Senator, 35 trillion bucks. Right. Let's get real. That's Senator right. Warren, you get the final word on this one. Uh oh, that's your dog, Mark. That's my dog. <laughs> <laughs> What's your dog's name? Peach. Peach. <laughs> How British? Maltese. Maltese and okay. shit. All right, Greg or uh, Mark, you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Here's what I see: uh, way off his baseline here. Like, just go and watch any other Biden, and you're going to hear. Uh, a low, deep chest voice with lots of calm, downward intonation. You're going to, you know, have a, a slow, gentle rhythm. There's something quite comforting, essentially, around Joe Biden's baseline. What do they call him? Un Uncle Joe? Is that, you know, there's the kind of the soft cuddliness to him. This isn't here at all. You, his pitch is right up. His in, intonation is going right up at the end of each line. And, and you can just uh, feel that cadence ramp and ramp and ramp and ramp. We start to get uh, the anger in, in the eyes, the narrowing of the eyes. We start to see the bottom teeth. We certainly see lip tightness. So we've got big indicators there of anger, raised voice, but upward inflection, which means it's not commanding anger. It's, it's getting pretty out of control here. And then right at the end, we, say, we see, we hear, we'll find out, we'll find out, and the head juts out and the forehead lowers. And at that point, we're then into, I would say, all the indicators of anger. And I believe that the head lowers because if blows are going to come from the top, if you've lowered your forehead, anything is going to glance away from your eyes. You stand less chance of your eyes getting attacked and they've also are getting damaged and, and they've also narrowed as well. So I think what's interesting here from my point of view as somebody who would train people to, to understand how to use this destabilization as an advantage. The important thing here is you can get Joe Biden really angry if you want to. You just got to know what the triggers are, but he will go there and he'll ramp himself way out of control, I'd say. Uh, Chase, what you got? We have him constantly raising his eyebrows and the eyebrow raise pretty much in general, indicates the opposite of what anger does to our face. Anger brings them down and together. The, the eyebrow raise is an innocence display, if you will, but we're asking for confirmation, which we're confirming with that. He's raising his eyebrows up, and he also has the upward inflection at the end of his sentences, which he's also asking for agreement. And he's staring at the audience, asking for agreement from them, asking for clapping from them. He's surrounded by younger people with much higher energy. So I think that's really influenced his decision on how to behave on stage. We see most of his negative references, he's using his left hand, positive references, he's using his right hand. He's focused very much on self pronouns here, very much on self pronouns. And he's, distancing all of the accomplishments, he's distancing them from Obama and making them his own. The whole reason the, the entire medical thing was successful was because of what I did. And I did this and I did that. So there's not very many team pronouns here. So we don't see a lot of we and us and our plan. We see a lot of self-focus in here. And 
overall, we see a completely uncharacteristic Joe Biden here, as, as Mark much more eloqu eloquently than I said. And in the end here, what we're really seeing with Joe Biden is an out of baseline response. So if we're watching the debates and we see the eyebrows go up for an extended period of time, that's an irregular response, a very good data point. We see the upward tone at the end of the sentences and all the other things that we talked about here just now. That's a very good data point for the debate. He's coming out of his baseline and someone had, has done that to him. And if you want to drill down into the behavior of this, just rewind a little bit. What were the key themes, elements, or statements that brought him out of baseline? So if I'm, if I'm working for Biden's team, I'm going to go back and do all of that and figure all of that stuff out and train him against that. If I'm working for Trump's team, I'm going to teach him how to use all of those things in the debate. Scott, what do you got? Yeah, so you brought up elements. And I know you've got a uh, – tell them about your elements that you put together. Yeah, I have a, it resembles kind of a periodic table of the elements, and it's got all the stressful, non-stressful behaviors, and you can rate everybody on deception and stress on there. You can download it for free. We might put it in the comments here. You just go to my website. It's all over the place, but it's absolutely free. You can download it and use it to watch the debates if you want. Thanks, Excellent. Scott. Um, so everybody's covering all the big stuff. Y'all are nailing it. So let's, I'll go to when, when he's got his eyebrows up and he's locking eyes with the guy asking the questions. And when he does that, he's doing that so he doesn't interrupt him. Because when you get somebody to get those eyebrows up and, and like Greg calls it, um, you're looking for them for, um, what do you call it, Greg? It's it, request for approval. Yeah. Request for approval. So that's yeah. why his eyebrows are, for me, it looks like this anyway. His eyebrows are up and he's locking eyes. So he won't say anything. So it's like he's talking right to him. That's why he's being loud. And it, he's being loud because he's a little bit frustrated because everybody else is talking longer than he is. And he's finally said, I've had enough of that. I'm going to go in swinging. So that's why he's getting loud. Um, and you see his eyes getting wide, as we talked about as well, because he wants to make sure that he's being listened to. Nobody's going to interrupt him. So the, out of all that stuff, that's, all he, that's the only ones I had left. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, so I'm a little different from you guys. In this case, I think he's hit something I call the holy warrior. And politicians are really good at what I call the holy warrior. They're waiting for a trigger button. This is a lot of prepared stuff. He is now that now look, I'm the only one on the stage who's ever gotten anything done. That that's his claim, right? He can say that right up front. And nobody else there has ever been in federal government at level he has is his point. He gets to this holy warrior, and what the reason I call it the holy warrior is everything aligns. His hands are up, his brow is up. His pitch is up. His cadence is up. His volume is up. Everything is lilting. He's doing this. He's selling you. It's almost like he's a evangelical um, preacher somewhere because he's got the cadence and he's got the rhythm and he's everything is running in a positive fashion like a preacher would. Then he gets everything. I mean, his illustrators, I always say this is request for approval and often can be deception. In this case, it's not deception. It's come on, people. Believe me. Listen. Then he gets down to uh, its cadence, message, volume, even a little bit of laughter mixed in there. And I, I still think it's prepared. He gets, the only thing he does get a browbeating moments, he turns and looks and starts to attack Mike Bloomberg. Then he drops his brow and starts to poke on him. And the aggression then turns on, on Mike Bloomberg for a minute. And at the end, he does a very dropped off voice compared to the rest of the time. And that's, let's get real. And he's being commanding almost, to use your remarks you always say about that. To me, Mark, this, when I was a kid and doing theater, this reminds me of iambic pentameter. Ba -bump, ba -bump, ba -bump, ba -bump, ba -bump. That's why I think it's staged and planned. That was what yeah. I saw. So, yeah. so I, I agree. I think there's an element there of him being evangelistic. I think for any performer, the trouble with this is, have you practiced delivering this under those conditions, with that pressure. I've no doubt that he's practiced giving this kind of thing, and he may have given it in the past as well. I would suggest that he's never done it under these conditions, and we, and we do see real anger come out, and worry my client, I'd be going, you know, you're not doing that. You're not doing actual anger. Like, nobody votes, no, or, or certainly your voters are not voting right. for an angry person right now. Now, I don't think he delivers it at a, at a, at a very high level, 
But my worry is, look, if you can go to number two, you might get to number five. And if you get to number five, you, it, you might dial up to number 10. And now we've completely lost because you lost the plot completely. It's just dangerous if the politician, if the client gets too emotional on the stage. Right. Yeah, I agree. I think his answer was loaded. I think it's one of those he's rehearsed over and over because somebody said, now, you know, they're going to ask this. This is going to come up. And he saw his shot and just took it, you know. So I think he did a great job at that. Senator Warren. Mr. Vice President and Senator Warren. Hey, I'm the only one on this stage that actually got anything done on health care. Okay? I'm the guy the president turned to and said, go get the votes for Obamacare. And I noticed what everybody's talking about is the plan that I first introduced. That is to go and add to Obamacare, provide a public option, a Medicare-like option. It cost a lot and increased the subsidies. It cost a lot of money. It cost $750 billion over 10 years. But I pay for it by making sure that Mike and other people pay at the same tax rate their secretary pays at. That's how we get it paid, number one. Number two. You know, the, from the moment from the moment we passed that signature legislation, Mike called it a disgrace. Number one, number two, Trump decided to get rid of it, and number three, my friends here came up with another plan. But they don't tell you. When you ask Bernie how much it cost, the last time yeah. he said that, I think it was on your show. He said, "We'll find out. We'll find out how, or something to that effect." It cost Senator over thirty-five trillion bucks. Right. Right. Let's get real. That's Senator right. Warren, you get the final word on this one. All right, we all good. Yeah. Good. yeah. Right, here we go. But if I win, I am going to instruct my attorney general to get a special prosecutor to look into your situation because there has never been so many lies, so much deception. There has never been anything like it. And we're going to have a special prosecutor. When I speak, I go out and speak. The people of this country are furious. In my opinion, the people that have been long-term workers at the FBI are furious. There has never been anything like this where emails and you get a subpoena, you get a subpoena, and after getting the subpoena, you delete 33,000 emails. And then you acid wash them, or bleach them, as you would say, a very expensive process. Greg, that sniff is yours, so. Oh yeah, I start. love this one. I love this one. Well, Trump, the Trump sniff can be many things, he counts, you know, he will count victories with a sniff. This one's not that, but he will count victories. Every time he scores a point, he'll go, he's keeping track in his head. I know other people who do it all the time. I live in the South, not a fair, not an uncommon thing in the South, not that he is Southern. This is the best example of fight or flight we're going to see in a long time. It's not that he's afraid or angry. Every one of us Every one of you listening, every one of you watching has been in a position where you're in an argument with someone and there's tense words. And when those tense words occur, that brain goes, okay, fight or flight. We're, I always say this, our brain is not smart enough to tell the difference between having our rear ends chewed by a tiger or our wife. They're the same thing. Our bodies respond the same way. We're primitive. Our brain starts to function and go, oh, I'm in trouble. I need to run. In this case, it's shallow breathing. Chase, you talk about being able to see a person breathe in their upper chest versus their gut. What happens when the shallow breathing occurs is your, your respiration's short. It might sound heavy, but it's so short, you're only filling the top of your lungs. So you hear them going, and you can hear him sniff in heavily a couple of times. His cadence shifts because he's in an emotional state, and you can see his movement of his hands shifts, his word patterns shift, the pitch of his voice shifts. It's higher pitched because he's breathing rapidly and that air is passing his vocal cords a lot faster. He's irritated, he's ready, he's angry, and he's going after. You can, you can watch him swallow up top as well. The swallowing is up high. It's not a deep, relaxed kind of down here. And his attack and the message and his eyes are all focused on Hillary. He's got one target. I wish we could see him up close because I can bet you he's got some pupil dilation. His blink rate is up but his eyes are locked. That's aggression all day, every day. So that's, this is the best fight or flight I think we're going to see, and especially from a big man. Um, and I think, Scott, you're next in this time. All right. Um, I think everything, I agree. And everything we're seeing here, I think, is classic Trump. Everything from his, his illustrators, illustrators are the things people use when they're, they're emphasizing specific words or phrases, like I just did, just did right then. Trump, go, he uses almost all of them. He doesn't use that, you know, that three and a half where he's doing this because he's not talking about uh, things that are personal like that. But this is a loaded answer as well. He was, he was ready for this, so uh, for this, uh, this attack. Um, 
his illustrators, he's using them so much, they're almost on every word he says. Everything he's talking about, he'll use an illustrator. He'll even switch mics and go back over here. And he's using his little okay thing on the left, but he uses his little pinch thing on the right. He's doing his pinch thing. That's when he's, he's hitting specifics. He always puts his, his fingers spread like this, and he, he'll hit that like that. So specifically this and specifically that. That's what he's doing with that. I think he's trying to do that over here, but it ends up being like an okay sign as he's, as he's doing that. Um, then when he says, well, I have a, sp a special prosecutor, a prosecutor look into your situation. He says, you see him stand up straight like he's proud. And he does that thing that Joe Navarro talks about where it's, it's like almost uh, anti-gravity where you bounce up. Joe's example is always uh, when, when and you'll see this every time in a wedding. Every time the, the groom sees the bride come in, they'll pop up on their, on their feet just a second and come back down. When, when you get exciting news from someone, you'll, as you're talking to them, you'll see, you'll see people on the phone doing the very same thing uh, when they do that. So at that point, he feels like he's scored big because he's been waiting for this. He's been waiting for the time. He's got, I think he's got his, his, his setup. You know, you have fighters that get their punches down. They'll have their, their special punch. That's one of the special punches he had ready to go for this fight and for that, his opponent. So I think that's what's happening here. So, Chase, what do you got? I've got some different stuff here. We see that uh, okay gesture when he's making the okay gesture. If you want to know while you're watching the debates when he's prepped and ready for a statement that he's going to make, look for that gesture. That's when that's going to come out most of the time there. And when he's saying, I'm going to hire a special prosecutor, he switches his mic to the hand that Hillary's on. So now he has this barrier. And I think that was a barrier while he was going through this really difficult part of what he was going to say. He formed a little barrier with that microphone. And you can watch, if you watch this clip back, you'll see him hold it differently, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. But we also see anytime Trump starts talking about concrete details, he's talking about the details. But then when he wants your approval, he'll throw in another detail and his fingers are open. So, Take a look on any video back in the past when he's talking about concrete details, fingers are closed, fingers are open when he's asking for approval. Same kind of a deal, great baseline, and it's a great thing that goes back to his videos to Larry King in the 1980s, I think, 87 was his Larry King interview. And I attended a military academy growing up, uh, so did Donald Trump. The way that you hold a military saber is the way he held the microphone with his right hand. So I don't think there's anything unusual about that, but I do think that is beat into him. And I think that he's feeling like he's in the moment right there and he's holding it exactly like an army saber, which I've never seen anyone really hold a microphone that way, but it's two in the front, two in the back. And that's how you, you've got a grip on the army or whatever branch of service saber there. I'll leave it at that. Mark? Mark, what do you got? Yeah, lovely. So I, I'm with you exactly, Chase. And so to that point, I bought a little prop with me. <laughs> and so what you're, what you're specifically talking about is this grip here, which is an extraordinary mic grip. Because he's got a, a, a heavier mic than this one here. And it's a lot of weight to try and carry up here. Now, I think what we see, I totally agree with, the, with, the, um, with that blocking move that he does. I think it's partly to do as well with he is destabilized. And so he has to change to the other one to block. And then you get a different grip. And then when it comes back, he isn't doing the same grip. He's gripping it like this. So I, because this is a, a beautifully finessed, delicate way of working with a mic. And he's destabilized enough that he doesn't go back to that grip. So I, and oh, and, and when he's over here, we start to see this digging gesture that he does with this hand. Now we were talking about my little uh, peach, my little Molshi dog. The Molshi is a cross between a Maltese and a Shih Tzu, both of which are very ancient ratting dogs, one ratting dog from China and one ratting dog from Roman Europe, crossed together. Uh, she loves to do this digging thing. First of all, to escape. It's one way to get out of stuff, 
is to dig your way out. And it's another way also to get to the rat, to get to the mouse, the vole that you want to get. And so that's what interested me about swapping to this hand because he gets to his dominant hand and he gets to do this gesture of digging in there, I would say. I don't think it's an escape gesture in this case. It's like, I'm really going to dig into this piece here. So I think he is, um, he is definitely destabilized. He is definitely fight or flight. He's definitely on the run. But at the same time, he's got still some super aggressive gestures going on, on there. So I really love to watch that. I'm glad you concurred on, on that. I'm glad I got to use a prop. Um, so Mark, Scott Mark. got to see a mic. You want to know what it is, don't you? You want to know what kind of mic this is, don't you? Yeah. 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 So it's an EV. It's an EV mic. It's not a great mic. It's an EV yeah. uh, RE50B. It's cut, it's used hold, hold it the way you were holding it with that two finger thing. Yeah. And kind of put your head down like this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. <laughs> Mark Bowden is, Mr. Mark Bowden is now going to do the rainbow song. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the rainbow. I'll do fly me to the moon. No, do uh, the, do uh, uh, Judas Priest, the Green Man Alicia with a three pronged crown, <laughs> and now Mark Bowden. But this is definitely this is definitely a crooner's grip. Yeah, this is definitely this isn't you know that's rock. Yeah, yeah. this is like this is like crooner. You guys trust Scott more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> but if I win, I am going to instruct my Attorney General to get a special prosecutor to look into your situation because there has never been so many lies, so much deception. There has never been anything like it. And we're going to have a special prosecutor. When I speak, I go out and speak. The people of this country are furious. In my opinion, the people that have been long-term workers at the FBI are furious. There has never been anything like this where emails and you get a subpoena you get a subpoena, and after getting the subpoena, you delete 33,000 emails. And then you acid wash them, or bleach them, as you would say. A very expensive process. All right, is that all of us? Yeah. Yeah, I think all so. Right. Let's move on. Did he use his power to stop those deportations? He went right around the question. Mr. Vice President, you want to be President of the United States. You need to be able to answer the tough questions. I keep my recommendation to him in private. Unlike you, I expect you would go ahead and say whatever was said privately with him. That's not what I do. All right, Chase, what do you got? So we see, we start this video, we've got a lot of open mouth, head down cast gestures here. And in the grand scheme of things, might mean anything. But if we see someone with their mouth hanging open and it's not a normal behavior for that person, that's a need for oxygen. The need for oxygen is triggered by usually just one thing, and that's a spike in adrenaline. So we need some kind of oxygen there. So we're doing a little bit of, I'm going to break away from this. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to re-oxygenate my blood for just a second. The head's downcast while he's listening through this question. He's processing. And when he's hearing all of this, he responds. He starts having trouble finishing a few of these sentences, and his head jolts forward. I think that forward head movement is the way that he's trying to non-verbally and unconsciously force these words out and force them forward so that they will come out. The sentence comes out like it should. And this is just a behavior. We're, we're just looking at baseline here. So this is something that I would pay attention to during the debate. If he's saying a number and his head's coming forward, is there some apprehension or reservation about the actual number or the real number. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. I'll pass it over to Greg. What do you got? Yeah, so a few things. He studies his notes as a deflection. That's all, every time he wants a break, he puts his head down. I, I saw the same thing, the mouth open, he needs some air. I mean, he's just gone through one attack after another. This request for approval is one where he has uncertainty and he's trying to get permission from people. He also, when he's talking to this guy, almost says the word secret, almost says the word secret. And he stops and redirects to, I keep it, um, I forget what word, he, what word he uses there. But he says, I don't, you know, he says and stops. The other thing I notice here is he closes his eyes for a second as he starts into the conversation. And that may be a learned behavior because he was a stutterer and he was taught how to break that. And people are taught all kinds of ways to break that. There are different methods, I know. 
He has concern and, gr- and grief in his face when the guy's attacking him, of course. And then he does the closed eye piece. And then my favorite part is he says, when he almost says secret, he says, he turns and he says, but you would probably tell everything you knew as he turns his face away from the guy, literally turning his back on him and engaging the audience. It, it's To me, it's a masterful way to get out of a hard conflict that he knows he's not doing well in because you can see the concern in his face. And that's what I got. Um, Scott, I think you're next. Or okay. You, um, Mark well, it, he's using his head as an illustrator. It's a lot of times, and he'll do that quite often. And sometimes his illustrators aren't, in this case, aren't right on the money. When someone is, is you're illustrating something, you say, I'm, go, I'm not going there because this happened and this happened. If they don't, if the illustrators don't land right on the money on those things, I'm not going there because this happened and this happened. And, or they'll keep going after they talk. That means they're still thinking. That means a lot of, of internal conversation going on there. They're, they're, they're thinking fast because he's trying to come up with a good answer. So that's what I'm seeing there in, in that. And then you guys covered a couple of things I was going to get. So Mark, what do you got? Yeah. So let me pick up on what Chase was saying there about adrenaline. Uh, one of the things that adrenaline does is to wipe out short-term memory, which means all the work that you did yesterday or just earlier on your debate prep just disappears out of your head. So that's a real problem. So what we're trying to do when we train people for this is to countermeasure that adrenaline. We don't want the adrenaline to happen. And now, people are going to go towards fight and flight. It's a, the reason why people want to watch debates is they know it's extreme pressure. They want to go, look, have we got somebody here who can lead us under pressure? What's our best way of testing this? All right, put them in the ring together, see how they do. See who comes out like, like a leader for us. So we're trying to countermeasure what is absolutely going to happen. I think we absolutely see an adrenaline uh, rush. Uh, you know, absolutely right. That, that, that gasp for oxygen, the wiping of the memory, so he doesn't quite know what he's going to say. He's now lost his countermeasures for that stuttering. So we do see those words collapse on him stuff doesn't start to make sense to us because we're not hearing all the words because he's not getting them out we see a vocal click there which is which is quite usual for stuttering it's more pronounced in somebody who might maybe have has Tourette's so if you want to hear that um, you know listen to somebody with with Tourette's and you'll hear this vocal clicking that, that you you hear from him there he doesn't have Tourette's but yes he he has been a stutter he is a stutter he's got some countermeasures for that but they're starting to disappear from him I think as we're rightly pulling forward here because there is a rush of adrenaline because something has triggered him so again we'd want to go back before that and work out what's the specific thing that's going to trigger him and if we're in opposition can we do that again? Can we make that happen again? Because that's not going to look good. That's what I got for you on that. Cool. Did he use his power to stop those deportations? He went right around the question. Mr. Vice President, you want to be president of the United States. You need to be able to answer the tough questions. I keep my recommendation to him in private. Unlike you, I expect you would go ahead and say whatever was said privately with him. That's not what I do. All right. Everybody good? Yeah. yeah. Nice, guys. Go on. Just for the record, though, are you saying that what you said on that bus 11 years ago, that you did not actually kiss women without consent or grope women without consent? I have great respect for women. Nobody has more respect for women than I do. So for the record, you're saying you never did that? I said things that, frankly, you you hear these things are said. And I was embarrassed by it, but I have tremendous respect for women. Have you ever done those things? women have respect for me. And I will tell you, no, I have not. And I will tell you that... I'm going to make our country safe. We're going to have borders on our country, which we don't have now. People are pouring into our country, and they're coming in from the Middle East and other places. Uh, we're going to make America safe again. We're going to make America great again, but we're going to make America safe again. And we're going to make America wealthy again, because if you don't do that, uh, it just and it sounds harsh to say, but we have to build up the wealth of Thank our you, nation. Mr. Trump. Right now, other nations are taking our jobs, and they're taking our wealth. Thank you, Mr. Trump. And that's Trump. what I want to talk about. Okay, Greg, what do you got? Sure. My, this is a, a good one because he doesn't answer the question until the third ask. 
When they ask him a question, he does Donald Trump 101, which is have prepackaged tripwire things to say. And, you know, all, all politicians do this. I say they're like roaches when the lights come on. They got things they spit out so they have time to think. But his is always the go-to. Um, this is great tripwire. I have great respect for women. Nobody has more respect than I do. And, you know, you can see Hillary's face is all wrenched up when he's saying that. But that's time for him to think. Watch his arms are contained. He's not illustrating. Even when he does illustrate, it's from here usually, but he's not illustrating, not moving his hands to emphasize what he's thinking. By the way, the camera didn't freeze up, so I guess I don't need to go fund me for, for IT. Um, his blink rate's through the roof. He is doing the dancing bear or the chained elephant, as I like to call it, as he's moving around there. And this is a canned response. On the third response, he does a answer the question, and he says, I have not, with his forehead up and his eyes closed which is an odd way to answer a, tr a question truthfully. So he knows he's in a bind. He's saying, you heard me say these words. You see his body language ramp up. He, there's no way to deny this. And when he does the forehead up and the eyes closed, it's odd. It's not a normal kind of a conversation. Then he goes into make America. Again, you'll make America great, make America wealthy. And his eyes make contact with the moderator very specifically. He's on message. He's doing what he does best. He picks up his hands and he goes into cell mode and his blink rate decreases. He's back on, on path. So he's able to talk. And that's what I got. Um, Chase, what do you got? So we start the video off. He's holding the microphone uh, right in the middle here and he moves it immediately off center line. And I think this is him getting training from some kind of a Mark Bowden character. <laughs> Mark, were you on say, <laughs> Don't let anything cover the middle, keep it away from the middle, everything. Don't cross this line with this hand. Don't go across those kinds of things. So we see him revert back to this. This is a tough question. What does my training say? Okay, I'm going to step one, open up. And that would be something probably Mark would say. Well, I'll let you get to it. Yeah. And what we see here is a resume statement. So I ask a sexual predator what happened uh, when – this young lady was in your car at the softball field and his response is, I have a master's degree in behavioral psychology. I know exactly what that would do to a kid. I've been volunteering teaching here for the last 14 years. My kids are friend with David's kids. So that's a resume, but it also doesn't answer your question, which on the behavioral table would make it a nine. So there's a lot of things here that we're seeing. We're seeing some eye blocking, which Greg already covered. But there's one thing in particular that I'd like you to pay attention to here. There's a psychological principle, well, two actually, that are called the primacy and recency effect. This is our tendency to remember the beginning and the end of certain things. So if I am trying to persuade an audience, no matter what, I will even interrupt the moderator of a debate to make sure that the final message is what I really want people to remember. Our brains are millions of years old, they tend to remember the beginning and the end of events. If you think back to your birthday party when you were a kid or Christmas from a few years ago, the beginning, walking downstairs and seeing the presents and the end, putting all that crap into a big trash bag and taking all the wrapping paper and stuff out of the house. So the prime scene recency states that we're likely to remember that stuff. So we'll start with that message. Nobody has more respect for, than me. And we'll end with the message. We need to make America wealthy again. And that as a human is what we, all of us are most likely to remember from his answer. And I'll pass it to Scott. What do you got? All right. Great. Uh, you guys nailed a couple things I was going to hit too, but uh, going back to what Greg said, we're seeing behavior here that isn't normal for him. You know, we see him that it's all, he's all tight. He's not moving. He, we see no illustrators at all until what? Until he starts talking about money. <laughs> as soon as he hits money, hey, here it comes. So that's when he starts, he starts with his uh, illustrators, um, which I, th I thought was fascinating because it's classic. It's classic Trump. And um, the eye blocking, I think, is what we're seeing when he closes his eyes and says, no, I, no, I did not. And he's not looking at, uh, what's that guy's name? I can't remember his name, the, the moderator. Tapper in this case. I think it's tough. Is that who it is? Okay. I I can't. Yeah. Um, but Good that's point. when he, yeah, because he looks at it for a second at the first one is that when he's asking the question that he doesn't look at him again because he goes, yes, I do. We've all known people, you ask him a question, they go, yes, I have. I've never done that. You ask me again, they close their eyes. Well, I've never done that. 
But in this case, I think it's more of an eye blocking thing because I think he thinks he's, he, he's busted there. So he said that stuff and he's kind of, you know, uh, blocking from that. Um, oh, and when he's answering his questions, he's looking at the camera when he's answering. He's not looking at the moderator. He's not looking at his opponent. He's looking right down the barrel, man. So, which is, which is classic Trump. He knows where the money is. You know, <laughs> he looks right down where he's supposed to be looking to who he's selling to. So that's where I am with it. You guys covered a lot of stuff and I had to mark a bunch of junk off. But so Mark, <laughs> why don't you wrap it up? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let me tell you what I see. And, and also uh, tell you how I help uh, this particular person if I was, if that was what I was doing. Um, so here's what's happening here. He's definitely under stress, but he doesn't have the countermeasure for this. So the stress, the pressure, the adrenaline is wiping out his ability to get hold of really good words and sentence structure or locate the rhetoric that he has stored up ready to go in order to you know, get, get, get the, the party line or his line out. And here's why. He's stuck with this flipping mic in his hand. So first of all, I would have never have allowed that to happen. I'm saying we're not, we're not going to have my client where, uh, using a mic because it means that they can't use their illustrators. And when you can't use your illustrators, it stops the broccus area producing good words. The, the dexterous nature of the fingers is attached to the broccus area that does language. The more dexterous you are with your fingers and your hands, the longer words you can actually, and, 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 and better sentence structure you can put out, but he's been hobbled with this. He's also got one arm hanging down by his side, which is why you see that flopping and waving around. He hits it at the end because suddenly he realizes if I bring this up and start some of my dexterous gestures, I can get back onto my script. But really his dominant hand for that is this one here. And he really needs to change his mic to that or get rid of it and get both hands involved. And then he would have got himself back out of fight and flight and back into his learnt structures. So uh, yeah, we've absolutely got him under stress and pressure here. He doesn't have the countermeasures. He doesn't know what to do when he feels that stress and pressure to countermeasure that. Uh, so, so, you know, let's see in, in debates whether he's improved around that and whether his teams will allow him to have a handheld mic or not. That, that's what I got for you. Just for the record, though, are you saying that what you said on that bus 11 years ago, that you did not actually kiss women without consent or grope women without consent? I have great respect for women. Nobody has more respect for women than I do. So for the uh, record, said, you're saying you never did that? things that, frankly, you, you hear these things are said. And I was embarrassed by it. But I have tremendous respect for women. Have you ever and done those things? women have respect for me. And I will tell you, no, I have not. And I will tell you that I'm going to make our country safe. We're going to have borders on our country, which we don't have now. People are pouring into our country. And they're coming in from the Middle East and other places. Uh, we're going to make America safe again. We're going to make America great again. But we're going to make America safe again. And we're going to make America wealthy again. Because if you don't do that, uh, it just and it sounds harsh to say, but we have to build up the wealth of Thank our you, nation. Mr. Trump. Right now, other nations are taking our jobs and they're taking our wealth. Thank you, Mr. And Trump. And that's what I want to talk about. All right. Well, there we go. In our um, looking at stress in the in the in the two, I guess we're going to call them opponents for yeah. the uh, debates. And uh, I guess th that's it for this one. So, if you like our channel, you like what we're doing, go ahead and subscribe and hit that little bell so it lets you know when some news come out. All right. Yeah. Anybody else want to wrap up with anything else? Chase, where did you say we get the uh, table of elements? Just uh, chaseuse.com. Okay, cool. All right. So everybody good? Yeah. Good. Thanks, everybody. Right. Yep. Thanks. See you next time. Thanks.